Okay, guys. Um, so today I'm pretty excited. Um, we're going to talk about a, a challenge that we have coming up um, that I'm going to make to our membership and give you uh, an unfair advantage to it. So most of you guys in here, or all of you guys in here, it looks like we've worked on one system or another, um, or we're in the process of working in them. Um, so what better way to really kind of test what we've been working on um, than to um, actually challenge it. All right. So um, what I've come up with is basically a 30 day 100k challenge. So anybody that actually has implemented the systems um, and and have them, you know, up and running in, in the business already, we should be able to easily extend your current um, revenue by a minimum of 100k. Okay, now that's obviously the target. Um, in the midst of it, I've come up with basically a, a challenge for each day. Um, and it's going to go through your entire operation, um, really highly focused on the sales. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here. And I will explain to you guys exactly what it's for. Now, I've created it for electricians and general contractors. I'll do a couple of other ones as well. So, um, and then we'll customize everything for our members. My, my goal here is to sort of go through this whole process with you guys kind of as a, um, a trial run. And then we're actually going to make the offer to the whole the whole uh, community um, and have them go through it and we can track the numbers and stuff. And my members had better destroy everybody in the community or that would look really stupid. Okay. So you guys can see my screen. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that, uh, it's clear enough? I think I showed you guys this yesterday too, but my my drawings my videos i'm not so great at them yet soon so <clears throat> all right so the first one to five days um essentially we're going to be <clears throat> looking at laying the foundation to increasing revenue and sales okay um Obviously, we got to have a plan for that. Even if you do have the systems in place, you will see um, there's still other very specific things that go into, um, you know, building an additional 100K in revenue, obviously starting with a very bold goal. All right. So the goal for everyone should be 100K in new revenue. Um, number two, day two, we're going to do an audit of the pro processes so again going through all operations looking at team members you know a lot of what we've already done in your companies but really um you know again systemizing it so that it becomes a habit of everybody's um number four which i think everyone could benefit from, fit from especially as inflation has uh, has been rampant is looking at our pricing strategies um and also taking and creating an action plan that the community can hold you to and you can hold yourself to um, in terms of how we're going to do this, um, implementing the CRM, most of you may have it, but we have some other cool, uh, things that are going to go into it, uh, especially as it comes to the offers, um, day eight, nine, we're going to develop a marketing plan. I introduced that to you guys last week. Um, so we're going to pick and, and commit to some of those marketing strategies. Um, we're going to set up the new automations for whatever offer that we're making. So this is like a promotional offer. We're going to launch our referral programs if they're not already launched and we have uh, some updates to those. Second one is we're going to train our team on the new processes. Um, and then we're going to implement a quality control system um, as well as set up a financial dashboards. These can be kept private. Somebody asked me that already, so you don't have to share it, but it will be uh, again, something you can, that we're going to set up with everyone so that we're looking at the right indicators. Um, we're also going to make sure that we have a uh, we know how to use the feedback loop from our customer base. So being able to create a feedback loop, make adjustments. Um, part of the problem with growing and growing quickly is um, our delivery. Uh, we're going to develop some partnerships. I'm going to explain that strategy. We're going to create an employee incentive program, which I believe everyone should have. If you do have staff or subs, subs, um, you can get a lot more uh, traction by having one. Um, and then we're going to launch the actual new marketing campaign and we're going to start your daily team huddles. These will be specific to sales. All right. Cause that's essentially what we're trying to grow. Um, we're also going to train the team on the upselling strategies, um, upselling or cross-selling. Okay. 
And then we're going to focus on our efficiency, streamline your supply chain, um, work with your suppliers to get your costs down, review the progress. And then by day 29, if everything has gone right and as planned, um, we're going to actually um, set bigger goals for the next 30 days and celebrate on day 30. Does that make sense? Everybody got that in terms of the, the actual plan? Now, um, a couple of things have to occur before we can um, we can do that. And this is what I mean about kind of getting an, uh, an advantage on this 30-day sprint um, is, <clears throat> and I'll run the builders one first, is we want to really think about our offers, okay? So, um, and we can think about offers pretty creatively, um, especially as we're going into that October span. So I was sharing some with the electricians uh, last night, but we'll go into some general contractors and builders offers. And what I want you to really think about is where is an opportunity um, to kind of play on the market sediment and wh where's an opportunity to create an irresistible offer, okay? Um, my observations, um, and not to, to, uh, to bore you guys to death, but most contractors don't, necessarily have a marketing problem they don't have a sales problem they have more of an offer problem all right an offer can't be underestimated most of us don't really recognize what an offer is um, so i'm going to explain that to you for anyone that doesn't a offer is a specific problem you solve a specific way for a very specific person okay so um, when we have a very clear offer that resonates with a particular audience or a starving crowd it, you don't need you know, over the top marketing. We don't need, we don't need, um, you can get by with very mediocre marketing. Now, on the other hand, if your offer sucks and you're just offering your services, um, you can't, you can't market an ugly offer. Okay. So a lot of guys stay stuck in their position for a very long time because they don't know how to market. Um, and even a marketing company trying to market them, there's nothing to, to, to promote. There's nothing to really, you know, push them forward. They look and sound like everybody else. Um, so they find it very difficult to grow. Um, and a good example of um, thinking about offers, um, I'll share with you kind of an example I ran last year um, about a cross sell or an upsell. So um, we do metal roofs for anyone that doesn't know. Um, and what we um, what we established was a lot of the jobs that we lost um, and th that we didn't win in another roofing company had completed over the last two to three years. Um, we actually could make another validated offer to them that would most likely resonate. And it did. So we started a, the campaign um, at the beginning of October last year. That's where this idea sort of came from for, for you guys. And um, we were going back after snow guards and um, new gutters. So most roofing companies, they want to install the roof, but they don't want to install the, the detail, the snow guards and all the little stuff that go with it. Um, and they leave a lot of money on the table because snow guards is one of our most profitable. We make like a 60% margin on them and everybody needs them after their first winter. They realize that, you know, snow comes off the metal roof pretty quick and can damage some stuff. So we re we offered snow guards back to the list of people that we had lost business with, um, and East trough. And I think we did some Christmas lights as well. Um, and to all of our surprise, the campaign was unbelievably successful and we did about 1.5 million in new additional revenue. All right. Just by taking and looking at the situation and finding a position to take with the offer. Now that involved no, you know, no additional, um, uh, marketing or ad spend. I didn't, you know, I didn't run promotions across Facebook. I literally went back to all the customers I had paid for the lead for and lost. Okay. So I want you guys to think how many of these kind of opportunities are sitting right in front of you and you may not realize it. Okay. And also what kind of offers can we create that are a win-win for both sides? So um, right now, especially um, I'm going to tell you that, the, you know, and you guys have probably noticed that consumers are very, very cautious about spending money. Okay. So how can we save them some money? And in the midst, you get to increase your revenue. So a good example is energy efficiency things. People are realizing the cost, trying to cut down their costs, trying to, you know, um, you know, for the longer term, reduce the, the cost of living, okay? How many of us have services that could maybe fit into that want or need, all right? And we can, we can present them as an opportunity for them to save long-term costs. So again, I'm going to go through some of them that I kind of came up and, um, you know, we can... 
we can work together on these. These are specifically for um, builders. All right. And they do need some massaging. I took them kind of from roofing ones and stuff that I'd run for the last few years. So um, obviously we can offer, you know, kind of right off the bat, you can go for your, your typical discount. I don't highly recommend these ones, but um, they still do work. They still do resonate with, uh, with a price sensitive market, um, depending on where you're positioned. Um, I much, much prefer the um, zero down, zero interest, the financing. So you're more working on speed and convenience. Um, and we use the word payment plan, not financing, although I put it in there. Um, but being able to offer payment plans so they can get what they want now and they don't have to pay till later. Okay. Um, so again, people were really scared for the first, first, second and third quarter this year about spending money. So if you can remove that fear and extend that, you know, two years, people will, um, you, you'll find you'll you'll be able to close a lot more deals. Um, the energy efficiency home package again. This is this has been a, a a game winner across the board, especially here in Canada and on Ontario, California, uh, places like that. If you can cross sell as well, so cross promotion. I'll give you an example of this. We are now offering um, a um, a Nest Home or a Nest Google um, system. Uh, when anybody buys our our um, energy efficient um, steel roofs, so we have like a, a particular SRI color, they get a they get a rebate from the government for for the metal roof. I actually get an upgrade to my to my sale. So a PVDF um, paint color is we we get about a twenty five percent boost on it for the the project, and just by throwing in that nest. Um, you know, it's made it more attractive to our customers, right? It fits into the brand and what we know that those consumers consume. So they're in the younger generation. Um, and again, it goes hand in hand. So we were able to work out a deal with a, a company that installs them. Um, pretty easy promotion to, to, you know, to present. Um, you may have other opportunities like that as well, right? So a lifetime warranty on the labor and materials uh, for structural work, which you should have anyways, um, this really doesn't cost you more, right? So is there anybody here that wouldn't be willing to give a lifetime work on their structural or on structural work? Framing, stuff like that. I don't know if I even have framers in here, but okay. Um, the neighbor yeah, referral, the, the, another big one that uh, we've been wildly successful with, and, and I'm going to explain to you how you can stack these offers um, so this is just to kind of get us creatively thinking uh, together about what you guys can do in your business. Um, and this can be, you know, I get this commented quite a bit. Um, you know, sometimes companies have enough big projects that they've got on their board. All right. What happens when we have a whole bunch of big projects? We run out of cash, right? So what do we do to to help to at least take the edge off of that? We want to look for, you know, lower, maybe lower ticket, lower barrier entry offers that we can make that are going to have good cash turnaround and high profit. Okay. So again, like I said, with the snow guards, our average ticket price was about, you know, 4,500 bucks, but it was like 70% margin. So, you know, again, was that easy to sell? Yeah. We already met with the people. So they were easy go ahead sales. Um, we literally just sent the offer. We already had the estimate sheet. Everything else was ready to go. So we didn't like there was, you know, no exchange. It was just literally go back and make an offer to them that that, that makes sense for them. Um, the neighbor referral uh, program. Again, if somebody's willing to give you a referral and for builders, especially or like large ticket um, uh, renovations, um, you may want to bump that up and make that a competition of some sort. All right, where we're going to offer a thousand dollar cash reward for anybody that we we land in their neighborhood uh, from their referral. Um, the eco friendly build, uh, solar panel assessment. Um, again, you could cross promote. Um, you, you can um, you know make some deals with uh, solar companies, easily increase your revenue. You already have a base of customers where you can re offer somebody else's offer. All right, working with them. All right. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, so think about the lists that you guys are probably all setting on all the contacts that you're sitting on all the good, you know, you know, the um, good morale you've built within those, those lists. How, how, could we go back to them and maybe offer somebody else's service and make a commission or make an additional income from it? 
Greg, you're doing something like that similar right now, aren't you? Were you talking about the electrician that you're working with, where you guys are exchanging leads? Yeah, so we're, we're exchanging leads, for example, a security contractor and us. Right. We're, we're swapping uh, contacts. Right. Perfect. And we're working on uh, with an air conditioning company, too, that we want to connect with as well. Perfect. So um, let me give you guys an, an example of a, a, a reverse offer that you can make to architects or engineers or to um, designers. All right. Very, very simple. Um, you guys have design work, right? From time to time. Great. You you message them, ask them if they can take on some more work. All right. Of course they can. They're slow. You meet them for coffee. All right. And basically you show them your process and how you build projects and, you know, try to partner with them in order for you guys to exchange uh, leads and opportunities. Right. They have projects in their pipeline that they could recommend for you. All right. On the other hand, you have, you know, design work that can be done. So it's, it's a fair exchange, right? You give them, you know, maybe access to job sites so they can present themselves as design build um, and really bringing the homeowner through it, get more involved in the estimating and boom, you've just created a relationship um, where you can exchange high value, um, you know, projects. So that's an example of an offer, right? We're taking a lower barrier entry um, position where we thought it out and thought it through where it's going to be attractive to the person hearing it. So I love that, that particular offer. We ran it. We've set, you know, literally thousands of appointments with that. Um, just talking to architects, engineers and, and making them the simple offer of we'll exchange our work for yours. Right. Makes sense. Especially if you're doing any front end marketing, it's very, um, it's, it, it can be a very good thing for you. So if you wanted to, to market your contracting business as a design build, I would highly suggest that you don't, you know, go out and hire a bunch of designers that are going to sit on your payroll. We're going to, you know, we're going to be smart about it. And then we rather partner with a credible designer or architect in that case, but you can still market yourself as design build, right? Because you can offer those services. Okay. Um, Instaquote uh, discount. So we were talking about this one. Um, I wanted to kind of explain this. So, I'll take this example. I work with a bathroom remodeler. Um, he used to be a general contractor that uh, was framing houses for a new construction developer. And what we did with his business is we got um, him to recognize that in every new subdivision, the very first thing that gets replaced are the bathrooms. Okay. Second is the roof. And third is a new kitchen. Okay. And every new home or every new development on average. So by knowing that, um, we also know that we have access to the plans and the floor layouts and subdivisions. So what we did is we took all of the builders, the houses he had actually worked on. We took all those plans, which you can openly get from a builder. We took them to a designer and had three designs built, a good, better, and best of particular you know products. And he went with the option to homeowners that they could just basically pick their package and their colors. And then we added financing to that. And the referral offer that I was explaining to you, um, and you know he went from struggling at to get five hundred thousand to four million. All right. The the even cooler part is he gets more vacation time than me. He spent the last nine weeks in um, in Thailand, so um, he's doing very very well. Reduced all the variables in his business. So that is a perfect example of a really great offer, one that makes sense because the problem with getting a new bathroom and from both sides is is high variable. Okay, so when you're when you're trying to replace something, homeowners don't necessarily know what they want, all right? And then we're trying to customize every everything to their to what they're looking for. When really what we should be coming through the door with is a is a package where they can pick their pick their their colors and their options and you've now systemized the the whole selection process, right? So he's done very very well. Um he uses a few of these offers that I'm I'm talking to you about in terms of, you know, it costs us, let's say $1,500 to acquire one of those leads or one of those sales, sorry. Well, does it make sense now to offer the neighbor who's going to be a better, easier sale to make, to, to make the referral for you? Absolutely. Right. And you may be able to get testimonials and stuff like that, that you can then ground, you know, stack your marketing campaigns in that in that area and get more of those bathrooms that you already have the packages for. 
Um, this one, this one is is more roofing, but the storm uh, protection offer. Um, so you can do safety inspections. You can do home, like you know, team up with an ins home inspector. All right, this is oftentimes a, you know a good good avenue to take in terms of exchanging leads, um, especially if you have a an area with high storms, high amount of insurance work. I know a number of uh, GCs and restorators that do this kind of cross promotion. So they'll work with a roofer, or they'll work with, um, you know, uh, general contractors, for example, so that, you know, knowing that they could get into some storm damage um, and then, you know, they're able to actually take that work on and have, you know, enough resources for it. Um, outdoor living bundle. So again, we get into discounts, but, you know, getting people to match price. So if they got the deck done, because a lot of people will put off the deck till the spring, all right? figuring that while well, we're already through the season if you can if you can you know run a, a late you know a late spring uh, or late uh, fall promotion that you know allows them to extend their payments or you know gives them a lower price all right people would could be persuaded by that right especially how how you would present that offer you know in terms of getting the deck so it's ready for the for the spring um great time to kind of promote those those services um First responder, military, always a, 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 an opportunity. And what most people don't realize is that by making those uh, public, you actually get um, more leads from uh, regular people because they value that you're giving back to the community and that you're um, that you're offering these discounts. So they, they actually have a, a good will to them. Um, and I've seen that when I've ran those before um, that we, we get almost equal to the you know, the ones we have to give a discount to as just regular people that seen that ad and, and it resonated with them. Um, the price match guarantee, you got to be very careful with this particular one. Um, but we've pulled it out when we really know that when we really know our market. So if we've been pretty dominant in an area and, you know, we've, um, you know, we've managed to keep the competition out and they're starting to slip in, we'll just very easily go and do a price match guarantee. I'll buy the job, but I don't care. Um, again, in terms of keeping them out of our area so that the neighbors are only seeing our signs, our trucks, and we're the branded, you know, the branded source. You can you can be profitable with this, again, depending on your market. Um, I once worked with a bathroom um, guy that did just the uh, tubs. He did like tub inserts, right? Well, there's only a handful of companies that manufacture them. So um, you know, in terms of being able to price match, he was, you know, he, he was very sure that he could you know, still be profitable. So, um, you know, he was able to offer that, uh, green build tax credits, um, especially in Ontario, we have a whole bunch of those insulation. Again, if you guys are a general contractor and you want to increase some cash flow, uh, insulation for us has been a gold mine and we can offer it to every single, um, you know, every single customer we do business with, even after we've done the roof. Um, and go back to them for another offer, especially as winter's coming, people are more open to it. Um, we also work with a um, a um, a company that does the audits for these tax credits in Ontario, um, where they will do like the scans of the house, they do a thermal imaging package, and we get paid every time a customer signs up for that. And literally, we're already there, right? It's just a, an additional service that we offer. Um, you know, to our existing customers. It's like an easy add-on. Um, I guess before I go any further, um, does anybody have any um, any of these offers that resonate or any questions about what I'm what I'm going through here? Because I was late, did you already drop it in the chat? Um, I can. Here, I'll share I just would like to now. try and find some inspiration because it's our 10-year anniversary this year with... Johnny okay. as the owner. So maybe I can spin this in some way to benefit our commercial situation. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, again, it's it's the fun part of this, right? Like you should be, you know, challenging yourself to come up with something that's different or unique, right? And these can be very, they can do very, very well. So there's in the chat. Oh, I lost yeah, my I didn't even now. think about it. It's my 10 year anniversary too. Oh. I didn't even think about doing something about that. Thank you for that idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's actually Jay's fault because he said it to me two weeks ago. So <laughs> I, as much as I try to be right, this guy keeps being right. It's a little bit fun, a little bit annoying. 
All right. Okay, so um, how about the five-year maintenance uh, plan getting into um, anniversaries and what have you? So again, we've done that. Um, all of you, everybody and everybody in this room could benefit from one thing, all right? If you can figure out a way to have a reoccurring revenue um, built into your business, all right, what you don't understand is like, that's where your evaluation on your business will, and it's your EDIBA will go through the roof. Okay. Um, and that's why right now the, you know, the companies that are highly sought off sought after and the ones getting $200 million buyouts and crazy stuff like that are HVAC, right? Why? Because they've known about the reoccurring revenue streams forever. I mean, electricians, plumbers, they can all have these services. And again, it's what, what most guys don't recognize is how much value that puts onto your business. All right. Because anybody that's looking to buy a business, um, you know, one of the most critical places that they're going to look at is, you know, backlog for, for contractors, like how much work I have in backlog um, or your reoccurring revenue. Okay. Um, and again, it reduces risk for them, but it does, you know, run your valuation up much higher. So a smart way to do that for builders, again, is having, you know, a maintenance program, a maintenance plan, right? After warranties have expired and you know that there will be th some things coming up, right? It keeps good, you know, morale with your clients. But again, if you have a an offer to go back to them with, you know, we could find a whole bunch more revenue um, and, you know, more referrals. And it's much easier to work with someone you're already, you've already worked with. Can I throw one thing in there? Yep. We, uh, I'm creating that plan right now. I live in a resort community where the majority Perfect. of my market is. Mm -hmm. So I'm creating a, a silver, what, a bronze, silver, gold, and platinum package for them to mm -hmm. choose from throughout the year for real, you know, for automate, there'll be auto withdrawal and they can yep. do all the cart stuff also. So it's, yep. I'm looking forward to implementing that. I've been wanting to do it for years. I just haven't. Yeah. So the, the I, off topic, but th like the system that the, the CRMs, the, that's, that's what it's set up for completely. Yeah, because it like uh, we use it in coaching, right? So it's the same thing. But anyways, we'll 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 talk about that after. Um, so I'm going to share with you another story because we all love stories. Um, I am part owner of a company that does home automation, um, and um, I've helped the company grow and actually bought into it, seeing how lucrative it was. Um, but it's a very simple model. Okay, um, essentially what we offer um, is home Google Home Nest systems. All right, so. Um, anything automation door, you know, um, um, the door cameras we do, um, just little, like the, all the, the Google suite tools. Um, the cool thing about it and Greg might not like me for this, but like it's low voltage. So you don't need to have any, you don't need to have electrician to do it. Most people don't realize, and almost nobody wants to install them or set them up. So like, as soon as someone buys one at a big box store or anywhere else, um, we've worked out a deal um with walmarts and canadian tires that um they give them a, a, cup a coupon code and um we actually end up installing them for them and giving them back a, a, a rebate off of the off the the purchase so an average ticket is is about 1200 bucks anywhere to four grand okay this is where i really learned this to be effective and you know the the tripwire offer so Again, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about stacking offers. So a tripwire is essentially uh, a low barrier entry offer that you're going to break even on, all right, so that you can offer your core offer and your profit maximizer offers. So this is how it would look. The The tripwire is the 199 installation. Now, we can. it's hard to make money on the 199 installation for a home nest, but when we get there, what do we do? We upsell them on the, the door cameras. We upsell them on the automation, the insulation for their home, the home, the home audit, the green audit, the tax codes, like all of these things are stacked offers. Once we've gotten through the door and then we wrap that up into a low monthly payment that they can take and they get approved from instantly. Okay. Um, so again, when you're thinking about, you know, how to create an offer, sometimes it's not, you know, the big, coming through the door with a big purchase. It's figuring out ways that you can make smaller, lower barrier entry offers that are going to attract people and that are no brainers in their mind, right? So if somebody has a particular problem that you can solve, all right, offering an inspection, 
you know, Christmas lights, another good example, right? How many people love hanging their Christmas lights? Right? Nobody, nobody. I'm a roofer. I don't want to do it. Right. So, but you know, again, I seen the opportunity there in that, you know, who are they going to call? Who do they normally call? Well, some guys with ladders, right? So, I mean, for us, you, you know, we do a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in, in just Christmas lights, right? Again, very profitable, but it's how you look at your, at your market. If you're looking at your customers as what other problems can I solve that are profitable, all of the things that I'm doing. So anything after the core offer, which is a metal roof is a profit maximizer, meaning the margins go up exponentially because it's a convenience. All right. So for example, again, I've sold my core offer and that might be competitive. All right. But I count on my profit maximizers and the way I build my quotes um, that they're going to want snow guards. They're going to want these other extra things. All right. Um, once they get over the initial, you know, expensive part, they're going to want these other things at one point or another. Maybe they can't afford new East troughs now, but in one year, when I reach back to them, it's a go ahead. That's another, you know, highly profitable thing. And they're not bidding that out. They're not getting other prices. It's a convenience fee, right? So gutters are like three, four grand. We make like 50% margin on those. We have crews that do them all day. And most of the work we do are past clients that didn't get them done at that time or that are getting them done while they get their roofs done. So again, think about your business that way. And like, what else are we leaving on the table and how else can we reposition new offers that will increase, you know, and it should always be, again, like I said, a profit maximizers. It's going to be something that you haven't paid real marketing costs towards, right? Those people you've already paid, you know, to, to acquire them in the first place. All right. Now I want to, I want to increase that lifetime value. And I want to make sure that whatever I'm offering next is going to have a higher profit because, um, you know, again, that's where, that's where you see the, you know, your, your profit on that job, double or triple. Here's another really good example of this. Um, we do a lot of uh, flat roofing um, maintenance, maintenance programs for factories for like in commercial. Um, and we, we do a lot for like golf courses and stuff like that. Um, I got into that first for the reoccurring revenue is that we can sign them to a reoccurring revenue or emergency, um, you know, emergency response package, all those kind of things. Um, but what we found it, it's quite funny is that we, we have about a 50, 55% margin on the service. They will call us for 10 years. All right. And we actually have made more money then when we actually get the job to do, we don't even want the job to do because we've made so much, we want them to just keep doing service, right? Let's just keep servicing and fixing that thing you've got because for us, we make way, way more money. It's lower risk. It's, it's lower, you know, burden to the company, but we also end up getting the full replacements. So you, you can think about that just by being able to offer something that's lower barrier entry. It's not less profitable, right? Again, like I said, I would continue of going back and fixing the roof. And the one I have in mind right off the top of my head is we did um, Angus Glen Golf Course. For 13 years, I serviced their failing roofs, all right? And we almost had like $400,000 in service bills. Well, I didn't make, you know, and, and out of that, we made $200,000 $250,000 in, in profit. I didn't make that on the full replacement. So, you know, like it's... It's one of those things, but again, it's how you position your offer. It's how you position your business to be able to capture those things. Um, yeah. So uh, again, a lot about partnering. So HVAC partner with electricians, electricians partner with HVAC. Both of you guys have things to exchange. All right. If you're a general contractor, um, you know, looking for home services, uh, looking for things that the homeowner is going to buy or upgrade after uh, a good one is blinds. All right. Again, if you if you if you got shutters or a higher end blinds company, um, uh, exchanging work with um, furniture stores, okay. What if, if you're building a brand new house? What are they buying next, right? If you have that, that's going to make you good. But you can also create a partnership where you're getting a a kickback to that. HVAC and electrical, I feel like you guys, um, you you almost need to be master networkers. Um, because again, you know, electric and Greg back me up on this. Like when you go to some of these calls, you're not an HVAC, right? Say that again, please. So like Good partnering question. with an HVAC company. So yes. like you get called out for things that are HVAC related, right? Where yes. it, it, it requires an HVAC. Well, if we have a partner that's an HVAC company that you're going to exchange something in, in 
with. Maybe he gets called out for an electrical only, you know, call, or there's a way to exchange business there, or you sell mm -hmm. his services on his behalf, which mm -hmm. is a, is a possibility as well. So again, maybe you want to get the reoccurring maintenance, um, you know, from that offer, you're going to partner up with somebody that wants to do the, the actual maintenance, right? Um, yeah. So finding that out, um, you know, figuring out what they, uh, what they, where there could be some, um, non-competitive, you know, alliances made. That's a, that's a pretty good way to go. Thermal imaging. I don't know if any of you guys have gotten into that. Um, you know, for me, I'll, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. When I first started out with roofing, um, the only thing that was selling my roofs was the fact I could pull out a, um, and at the time they were pretty rare, but I had a, I had a thermal imaging camera. And I had no idea what I was looking at. No idea for the first year. I was just purely bullshitting. I had no clue what any of the readings would mean. But I would put these pictures into my reports. And, you know, I would find the leak you, the traditional way. All right. We would find and stop the leak. But we would then take a thermal image and be like, this is how we found it. Right. And then the, the for whatever reason, um, we just stood out from everybody else. So every time they would have a leak call or a leak, they would call us back because they thought we were using some sort of equipment like, and I had no, I was using it, but I had no idea. Like it never found a leak for me. All right. I was using it the wrong time of day and everything else. Now I'm not suggesting anybody goes out and does that, but I'm pointing out the fact that by making yourself slightly unique by offering more diagnostic, uh, you know, opportunities, again, these are, these are low, uh, low risk and, and high profit services, right? People will, Again, if, if they have a, you know, they're thinking about changing their windows or they're thinking about, you know, doing a renovation and you want to upsell them on the windows, show them from the outside how much, you know, energy is being lost. Okay. Go to a job and, and Patty, this is for you. If you guys aren't using it, like you can see wet insulation and stuff behind the walls with a thermal imager. Right. Yeah. You can I've see, got one. I've there got you go. one. It's, it's a huge deal. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, a lot it's, of rot repair. So yeah, totally. Gonna... So the next, the next evolution to that is we've got a drone now that we use. Um, and like you, you fly the drone with the thermal imager, like you gotta be good at it. But, um, that's again, like, you know, how is anyone else that doesn't have one compared to your level of expertise when you do? Yeah. And we, and we have a drone, but we, you mean attach the thermal imager? To yeah. The you, there, you can buy them. Yeah. Okay. So I then, didn't know that. That's yeah. Cool. So then you're getting a whole view of the house. Yeah. Right. We use them for flat. So we can fly over a whole factory at night and see like where the, where the, like where they're actually leaking. Cause that was the thing that I made a mistake when, until I took the courses about thermal imaging, you, you can't do them in broad daylight. Right. Cause the, the temperature variance isn't, isn't enough. Um, but at mm -hmm. night you can. Okay, yeah. See you, Bosch. Uh, question for you, Jay. Yeah. Um, right now, I think one of the biggest things we can do with our offer is improve a streamline our design process. Oh yeah. Yep. hundred percent. And again, that might be a partnership you take, right? So, you, and not just with one, but if you have a design element to your, to your service. So for example, and the decking, you know, I, I'd mention this one, if you're doing decking, do a good, better, best like design, right. And package it. You you've got the same scenario that that the uh, the the um, bathroom guy has, right? All subdivisions have the same size backyards. Yeah, yeah. Right, and you go in there and you you design a good, better, best f to fit the models of houses that are there. Yeah. And now we're now we've eliminated, and this is the, the 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 crunch to it is it becomes a cash flow like king because you're not going back and forth over design. It takes a whole step out of it, and it actually makes the customer if it, it more endeared to you because you came with a solution first time, right? You lose customers yeah, and you in the design, design cycle. To your point, I could just say, Hey, mm -hmm. $10,000 down. And you know, and here's what you get. Pick your color, you know, pick, pick your trims, pick your treads, but you've already got that. And, and again, like you sketch up, right. And you can literally just drop the colors out here. Is this what you're looking for? No. Okay. You want this color? Yeah. Perfect. Game over. The, the, the job sold right there on the spot. One call close. Right, because people stall and delay a lot of times your objections, which we're going to talk a lot about, come from uncertainty, right? Like, so they haven't seen it or they can't visualize it. And then they want to talk to another contractor till they can, 
And then, and then, you know, they get the next guy in that gives them an idea or whatever, or they go back and forth with you for two months, right? Like there's no sense of urgency there. You can create urgency by saying, Hey, I have a, you know, fall, um, discount 5%. All right. I'm willing to give you back a thousand bucks cash on this, on this project. All right. But you know, and here's the design pick from your colors, right? Tell me what your treads are. All right. Or you're going to, you're going to book your early spring and be like, I only have 10 slots left in my spring package where you, you know, before the prices go up. All right. If you're willing to go ahead today, you know, based on the colors and, you know, the selections that you're making, we can make, we can get you into that schedule and you can, you can be rewarded with the discount. Now you've just stacked your spring. So I would run those in parallel as well. Right. Makes sense. So how do you, how do you, uh, how do you roll this all out as a CEO where you're like, okay, so we understand that offers is what streamlines mm -hmm. businesses and, and, and increases margins. Right. And then you're like, okay, well, I got to do marketing. I got to build that design SOPs. Mm -hmm. Well, before you do, before you ever do that, you got to micro test it. Okay. So we're going to talk about that. So the first thing is like, not like if I told you how many times I've made different variations of the offer, like this is an offer, like what you're looking at right now that I'm doing for you is an offer. It's a 30 day challenge offer. Okay. What mm -hmm. am I doing first? I'm going to come to my members, get them a benefit first. All right. Before I roll it out as a, as something else. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can do the same in terms of testing your waters and why I always like to go back to my existing customers, all right, is I have, a, a, you know, basically 63,000 contacts that I can just, you know, make an offer through. And you look at the response that you get. The other thing you guys can use is your social media, or you can go to Reddit. You can ask people, would they, would they like this offer, right? A lot of times, if you get the offer right, this is what I can't try. If you get a banger of an offer, dude, like, not only can you rinse and repeat it every single year, all right. But it doesn't require a lot of marketing. It doesn't require a lot of work. It's not supposed to be difficult. Right. So again, think about the, like in terms of validating an offer, like a good one that you hit and it's just, it fits properly. And it's, it's sort of thought through the marketing's easy. It's a no brainer. Right. So like, this is where you get almost like viral um, response to it. You know, you see your, your margins go up and and again, even those profit maximers are like we, we've talked about, I think, you know, we've thrown some ideas around before about like the barbecue, right? Like who gets a new deck without getting a new barbecue? I've seen that one lots of times, right? Where they'll, they'll pair up with Napoleon or something and get a rebate on their end and sell them, upsell them the barbecue or whatever, right? Well, for us, it's the deck and the interlock, right? It's the whole project, right? Yeah. Instead yeah, of it so... being a $15,000 project, it becomes a... $70,000 project, right? Exactly. One that not smart, but you know, where, where you could like you, you run a bit of a risk on that one. And I'm sure you've experienced it, right. When you put too much in front of them and then they need to think about it or like, it becomes, you know, like a timing thing. Right. So for me, I always try to get my core offer sold first. And then I, then I package in like, in, unless I've got like something locked in, like, so again, a perfect example of this is that we offer our basic metal roofing package as a good, better, best. And then our, we get, if they're not committed to any of those things, I'm not making them another offer on the, in this spot. I'm not changing my offers either. Does that make sense? Cause I don't want to, I, again, I'd rather go back to them, have, try to sell them on the core offer because trying to sell them a maximum, a profit maximizer. Like, so if I go to sell a hundred thousand dollar roof and all they want is ease troughs, well, that's not, it doesn't work out. Right. This is why it's so huge, Jay, because all this stuff's so over my head. How do you do this? How do you do that? That's why I love coming up with these ideas and just having you and your awesome team just run, <laughs> run and put it all in place. And I'm getting boop, boop, boop. That's right. You know, it's like crazy. Your team's there, awesome. There you go. So and you're again, okay, too. <laughs> it, it does it does help right so you know even hearing what other people are doing that's working you know the data that i get to collect and and share with the group is is phenomenal right because i get to see you know in in lots of different places and i hope you guys take me up on this as well because there's winners and losers in all of these right i base these on the the 20 winning offers that i've had in my in my roofing company okay so I've taken the concept of those and and spun them for for construction. But I want you guys now to add on to these. Come up with an offer now that's going to be unique to your business. And again, you know, in terms of testing it and and getting it rolled out, don't overcommit, right? 
I've, I've, I can't tell you how many times I thought, oh, this offer is going to like, this is, there's no way they can't, don't want this. There's no way they don't want this. I remember the first time I rolled out Christmas lights, I thought I was going to be rich. I thought I, I had, I had figured it out and I did not. And it was a absolute shit show. And I lost a lot of money doing it. I swear I was never going to do it again. Um, and you know, I ended up re coming back to the offer, realizing that, Hey, you know what? Like, it's just, it's right there. Um, reorganizing. And again, you'll see why I've put some elements like the quality control and everything else, um, in place. Um, because then I came back to it and now it's been, you know, it's been highly profitable for almost a decade. Right. So, and we're still serving customers. We sold a decade ago. Right. And that's a part of my reoccurring revenue stream that I have on my roofing company. So the sad part is I've done hundreds of millions of dollars now in, in roofing work and that's not worth a dime, but my Christmas light business is right. So, you know, like it's stupid things. And again, is it an easy offer to, to make? Absolutely. It's got timing. It's, you know, it's consistent. Um, you know, we do enough customers every year that people were, were continuously growing it and I don't have to market it. Right. I don't have to, all I have to do is send it to my email list. Okay. So, you know, even see of us, like the customers you've done in the past, right. Think about things that, you know, are easy enough for them to consume. Right. Or, you know, gets the referral from them. For example, I can't, I can't tell you how many, how many people I see that blow that one is, you know, they do a, they do a beautiful job for a customer, happy customer that gives them a, you know, a five-star review. And then they just never talk to them again. That seems like a cr pretty big waste to me, right? Um, and for some of you guys, you know, even thinking about how to pair with another company, like, you, you know, I can't tell you again, like creating those partnerships or those alliances where you're, you're profiting from them. All right. Um, again, by just selling the service, like I don't, our company doesn't do insulation. We're, we're partnered with a insulation company. We don't try to even present ourselves as doing it. We sell it though. And we make 30 points off it every time. Easy, right? Like easy peasy. I'm not looking to do insulation. I'm not looking to buy the equipment. I don't want to get involved with it. That works for him. I've got a guy that just loves to do with the insulation and is good at it. And it's nothing to offer it while I'm there. I'm in everybody's attic. We're in everybody's roof. And like, again, I've just taken and added 30% of the margin with no risk, no issues for me, right? Just goes right into their contract. We finance and Bob's your uncle. Like how many of these situations are we maybe passing up? Patty, for you, again, you, you know, you're pretty close to that as well. Sell the insulation. Again, it's it's right there, right? Right, right. Um, lighting, get, get involved with an electrical contractor that does, you know, high-end outdoor lighting. Um, and exchange that where you can sell it, you get him to package his offer, right? Where you have your, your estimator can sell it in the job. You know what I mean? Like general contractors do that, that stuff all the time. Right. Oh yeah. Right. Makes I sense. I need to get them to sell, to be a little bit more aggressive with, uh, pointing out what, with upselling for right. sure. Well, and the way to do that is the inspection. But, and you do inspections too, but like, again, I don't, we don't hard sell cause we work like when we send our, our, um, our foreman and stuff in for the job. So like once a job is sold, our, our project manager takes over with it. If the sales rep hasn't got it, the project manager will sell it, but it's not a sale. We, we do a, a attic inspection, right? We do a, a pre job roofing inspection and find other problems that, you know, the sales rep didn't find. Right. And when we do that again, you know, Hey, I was in your attic notice that you only have an R24. Did you know that you're losing about X, Y, Z a year in, in energy costs? If you'd like, you know, I can, I can include an estimate for this. So would you be interested in that? Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. You know, it might be three or 4k sales rep. Again, we'll call them and say, Hey, you know what? We could roll this into the, the financing. We already know, by the way, it's kind of a dirty trick when you get them on a payment plan, like the, the, Finance company tells you how much they can be financed for. So it's easy to find things, right? So, and again, you can, you can very well do that that way as well. See, Yavosh, that might be your answer. I'm, you know, it would make more sense to me if you're doing a deferred payment plan and well, you want to, like, yeah. It's just like, 
just think because I understand everything you're saying now. There's different avatars, right? Mm -hmm. There's going to be someone that spends eighty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars doing their front, like half yep. a million dollars doing the landscaping, right? No resistance. Then there's going to be someone that spends, you know, seven thousand dollars doing a front yard walkway driveway extension, right? Right. Well, and they could be side by side. Here's the thing, right? So, like, what you like the way I look at this, and I want you to kind of consider it is you could have the guy that spent eighty grand on his yard. All right, directly across the guy that only has seven grand. Okay. 100%. How do, I see it how, every day. Right. So every in day. that situation, we've got to we've got to have stack offering. Okay. So how do we take that initial seven thousand? So he has seven thousand cash. All right. What else can we do to maximize that ticket price? That's gonna be a win-win for both of you. Right. Do but you think the that, financing? Well, well, never use the word. We don't swear here. We don't swear, no, we don't the use the F word. No, no, the, oh, oh, okay. no, fine. We use payment plan only. You never ever say financing because that'll shut your customer down. You say, I have a payment plan that can defer your payments for two years. Are you interested? Or one year or 12 months, you know, even getting them to say yes in the moment, you know, how many jobs stall because they're concerned about money, you know, most of it's short term. So like, again, you know, taking that objection off the board by saying, Hey, you know what? I understand that money might be an issue right now and provided that is the actual objection. What if I were to give you a 0% zero zero um, payment plan that would allow you to pay this back over the next 12 months or we could defer it for 12 months? Would that help us to move forward today? Yes. Now, what that does is like, because you know, you understand how construction works. Like mobilization is a big cost of construction. Right? Huge. So, right? So I'm already here, dude, with my trucks and equipment, right? right. Why don't we just do the front yard while I'm doing the backyard? Oh, you don't have enough cash, okay? Now, this is like this is where sales training comes in because, like, huge. Right? How you how the words you say to surface the objection, right? Right. Big thing that like has it down. Some of it just doesn't have it, right? Right. I don't know how to present that offer. But this is why we're like, this is the whole point of this challenge is that you've got to align your sales team with the offers. You have to. Okay. So too often I see it where we haven't thought about how to objection handle. Now you'll notice in here, if you come in here for this, um, this thing, I've already gone through that. What do you think the first thing is that you're going to do when you build an offer? You build the objections to it. You get, you ask your friends, you ask again, this is what I mean about testing. You take it to somebody and then you you figure out what those objections are so you can then have your sales team handed it off, role play with them on the objections to that offer. The worst thing that happens is sales reps get put in a position where they have no, they don't understand the offer, all right? And then they get the objection to it and they blow it. And then they don't want to offer it anymore. And then they stop, like, again, it happens all the time. So why I'm setting it up this way is we're going to establish first what our potential offers could be what we think might work because it's just theory until you've proven it. Then you do your internal customers or people you've worked with in the past. That's who I recommend. Or you do um, a small like, you know, group, friends, family, whatever. Um, get all the objections worked out, script it, and then roll it with your sales team. Right. And then, and then you, and then you um, push go on it. Right. That way we're not ever over committing to something. Right. Make sense? Yeah, like it makes sense. It's the execution of like the execution element of like you logically it makes sense, but how do you roll it all out where Yeah, so that's that's the fun part of doing this challenge with me is that I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how I do it in my own business. I have done it in contractor AI, I have done it for tons of other customers. Um, and some of you even, right? So again, it's not, it, there's a process in the process to it. And I've like, I've documented how we do this. The first step is let's get an offer and validate it. Okay. At a low level. Like if your mom and dad or your uncle's aunt, or like, you know, some stranger on the street or somebody here thinks your offers, you know, shit and it's not going to fly and it has no value to it. You know, you're going to revamp that offer before you take it to market. Right. That's the big that's the big struggle always, because then when we put marketing, we put energy, we tell our sales team and they offer flops, then, you know, we're, we're less inclined to, to, you know, to develop it further. Makes sense. That's where I feel like a lot of, it, you know, if you knew, let me put it to you this way. Sivash, if I told you 
that in my back pocket, I have an offer that's sold millions in your exact niche, hundreds of millions. And this company in the state is doing a hundred million dollars on this offer. Would you be inclined to run it without, you know, without being concerned? Of course. Right. So now getting this offer means that you could be that hundred million dollar company. So does it not deserve a little bit of time to develop it? Because that's all it takes. If you get the offer right one time, one time, that's it. All right. Or it takes even, let's say it takes the next 12 months to get perfect. Okay. You've now just created massive amount of easy revenue to your business for life. Because again, these are how these things work. I'm still using offers that I got like the Christmas light offer, like a decade, right? It didn't start off pretty. It didn't start off like perfect. You know, but as we've matured and as we've gotten better at, at, at figuring it out, it's really simple, right? And the other cool thing, Jay, is like if you if you if you get the offer right and you price right, you can you can afford to hire the sub trades. Oh yeah, it's... to nail the to nail the operations. Totally right. So totally. then you can deliver, right? That's right. But if but if the thing is if 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 the if the prospect doesn't want to spend the kind of money or the scope of work isn't right, you're gonna have a million logistical operate because now now you're trying to save right. two dollars a square foot on the install, right. right? And you're like, well, there goes the, like like now you have quality service issues like. Mm -hmm. You know, most of it comes down to this, dude. Um, if you were five percent different than everybody else that's coming through their door, making them an offer, all right, and you stood out from that, you're gonna win. Period. That full stop right there, right? Like, so it doesn't take much. This is the funniest part about it. Like, even marketing companies that you know most of our, our clients have worked with, they don't get this, right? It's it's not the marketing. It's not the market. No one like. You can't you you can't market a, a shit offer like it just doesn't work. It never has. It never will. Right. However, again, like I said, an offer that's crazy and like somebody felt they got huge value and you profited from. All right, they're gonna tell the next guy. The next guy. It takes off. It becomes viral. Right. So when you're thinking about it, and sometimes those little things become big things. Right. So again, getting through the door for a lot of people is hard. Right. How do we liquidate our our marketing costs? on getting through the door, you know, that could be your tripwire. That could be your inspection. That could be your, you know, something of value up front that's going to get you very cheap, you know, qualified leads. So again, offers are in everywhere in our business. And as a CEO, all right, all of you guys need to understand this. You are making offers to the market day in and day out. And if you haven't thought about those and you haven't torn those apart and, and chewed them up, like that is your asset. That like a business is based on an offer. Like I said, a specific problem, specific person, a specific way. If you don't have that right, not, and it, you can go on for decades and uh, forever and definitely struggling because you never ever looked in the one place that matters the most, right? If you get this right, it opens up the door to everything else, right? Again, you know, if you can, if you can get hit certain targets with it. And like I said, Think about how we make offers to new staff members, you know, about the hiring, that, like they're the same thing. You can take everything I'm doing here and then talking to you about, and you can create the same kind of offers within the hiring market and boom, you've solved your hiring problem now, right? So get good at like breaking offers down and making them, the better you can make an offer. And this is a, in every business that exists on planet earth, the better you can pr make your offer and target it to your ideal prospect, your ideal customer, the easier business will be to grow, right? You can't you can't fit a round peg in a square hole, right? So, yeah, and like, most of us are trying to do that. Like for your sub trades, mm -hmm. they don't want to deal with clients. They don't want to do estimates, right? They they just want to they just want to do a great job on job sites. Yeah, right. So you, so it's like, so think about it this way. When you like you, let's say you're trying to attract new subcontractors. Okay. You know what their pain is the disorganized contractor that screws them around, doesn't pay them on time, you know, you know, doesn't have material on site, all those things. Okay, great. Now, how do we solve that problem? What do we do that's different than everybody else? All right. Because that then becomes your offer up front. We're the most organized contractor you're ever going to work for. In fact, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. we, we, every job that we have, all right, yeah. is set up two days before you'll ever arrive. We have on staff 
material handlers that will be at your job site within 20 minutes of anything being short, not that it would be. And you have, you know, again, we have X, Y, and Z, right? Our payments are, you know, direct, direct deposit every five days, right? You can bill up to 90% complete. Like, again, these are offers that are going to stand out, but it's like, you got to understand what's, what is going on in your market first and see where the gap is. All right. There's always a gap in every market in every place I've ever looked. All right. There's always a gap, right? Take contractor AI. I'll use this as a good example. I know the problem with the market is coaching in general doesn't deliver real results, right? Like real systems. We're all here to look for systems. Okay. So I recognize that. Hey, the contractor actually needs help just implementing the system. They don't need the coaching on how to like what systems they need. That's more like, that's more like adding pain to their already like painful experience. Like just put the systems in for them. Is that not much easier? Right. That there's a gap. There's the gap in the market that I'm, that I'm, that I observe. Coaching could be free at that point. Right. What's the point of teaching someone strategy if you know they don't have the systems to be able to support it? It doesn't matter, right? The whole thing falls down if you can't build that on top of a system that can actually, you know, generate the the result that you're looking for. So again, you see it, right? So um, anyways, I'm babbling on and on now. Um, does anybody else have any other ideas um, about an offer or want to, you know, want to express it? Um, chat about it for a second. Okay. Um, so in order for us to, um, all enjoy this, um, and get some results from it, um, I would like you guys for next week to think up at least three ideas or steal them right off the pages that I've given. All right. Where, you know, we can discuss the offer side of things because what I'll do next, um, and what I'm doing in here, by the way, this is in the, um, sales accelerator. Um, if you come all the way to the bottom, I'll be doing ones. I'll do one for HVAC as well, like an example package. Um, Are you HVAC's... sharing your screen? Oh yeah, I sorry. Can... So we have access to those documents that you just. Yeah. Oh, earlier stuff. Okay. Yeah. So if you come into the uh, the sales accelerator and go all the way to the bottom, all right, sales accelerator AI. If you haven't got access, just reach out to um, Claudia and she'll get you access right away. But you come to the bottom. There's electricians here, and this is exactly like this is the the framework for. For building these out all i need you guys to really think about is your offer next all right and then we can do scripts and we can do like once you are confident in those um and, or you want to test something for example then we can start to work on the sales process to it and you know see if Osh was like bang on there right you work backwards right so you got to assume what objections you're going to get and like what feedback you're going to get if you want to test it and be prepared for it so i've also put in some strategies again i just i you know, they're, they've got the SOP on how to do it. And then the actual examples and stuff in here as well. Right. So this is, again, these are the, the exact things I'm using with companies to grow them. It's not rocket science or anything unfamiliar. We just have to, you know, I want to see how you guys do with your systems now all in place. Right. So you get to skip a lot of the technical stuff and we can really think about the strategy on top of this. The way that coaching should be. This is so exciting. Yeah. I think. <laughs> well, and again, we'll validate it, right? So like, I want to see real results. That's where I'm, that's where my head is at is like, again, if we're in a community, we're all striving for the same thing, um, you know, and obviously our team can support you guys on all of this stuff, which we'd love to do. You're all clients of ours. So, I mean, ultimately I want to see everyone hit this target with ease, right? And again, like I said, I encourage you, like if, you know, you have it on your brain right now. And I know this will be your objections because I've thought about them. I can't take on more work right now. Well, first of all, we'll get pro hire in for you, but that's a plug. Um, secondly, we can, we can run offers where we have no investment of time or resources into, right? We all have past customers. They still may have problems that you can solve and you can just partner with someone, you know, the easiest way, right? So again, everybody can, everyone can add to this and, you know, an offer doesn't have to be specifically for, you know, what I've shown here, but they can be other areas. And now's the time to really test this stuff out. And let's, uh, let's, let's get some huge results that we can, we can brag about to the group. Okay. Any questions, any issues?
No, we're all good. Okay, everyone knows where to get all these documents. Hey, Jay, a real yeah. quick question. Sure. Um, this is Anthony. I've been talking to you the last couple of days. Yeah. Um, is there any way? Because like right now, I am working. I just been listening to the podcast, listening to everything you guys have been talking yeah. about. Is there any way maybe me and you can touch up later? Because I am in Arizona, three hours difference. Yeah. Um, maybe possibly connect later and talk a little bit more about what you were talking about today. Yeah, not a problem, man. We can do that. All right, perfect. I appreciate right. it. Not a problem. We'll talk soon. Yes. All right, guys. Everybody have a wonderful day, and we'll we'll talk later. Bye, Patty, everybody. you're just gonna stay on, right? Yep, I'm gonna stay stay okay. on. Let me stop the recording.